and you see that the bar goes away, and if you turn it off, it's just a, it's a shortcut. There's another place in the menu to get there, but there's a shortcut right there. The next icon next to the flash is in, um, night mode. And that's a really good one to keep on for low light situations. The camera will respond a little bit more, more sensitivity. Um, the next icon that I have, and you may not have it, is an exposure compensation. If the room is dark and you want to make it a little lighter, you click on that, and on the bottom, you scroll right and left to e either, and you can see it, it, you can see the reaction right away. It lightens or darkens, so it adds or takes away exposure depending on what you need. Um, again, the newer phones have a RAW capability. RAW is a type of format that gives your f photos more information. Um, it mostly color gamuts, but um, it's just it, there's more information, which makes it a larger file. So if you don't have a lot of storage on your phone, you may want to turn RAW off. And the same with the next one is a live view. Now specifically when I'm doing with uh, pets or animals or the kids, grandkids in my case, I keep live view on and I'll show you why later. It makes a one second video clip. So if you didn't catch that right moment that you want to catch, you can scroll through and edit and change which, which picture in that one second clip you want to use as the, the photo. We'll get to that in, in the editing part. So that's the top row. Again, live photo takes up more space. The image size is bigger, the file size is bigger. So if you don't have a lot of space on your phone, you wanna use that judiciously. On the bottom, these numbers represent how much zoom you can use. If you go to the half, it's a wider angle, you get more in the picture. One is kind of standard, two zooms in, and three I have on this one. Again, not all phones have this. Three zooms in even more. Now you can certainly pinch and zoom, but um, explain with that. My experience has been if, if you pinch and zoom, you don't get the same clarity in a photo that you do if you just use the, st the standard four um, focal lengths is what I'll refer to them. At the top, this is a menu button. If you toggle that, down, oh, I already had it. On the bottom of the screen, a bunch of other functionalities we open up. We talked about the flash. The flash is off, but when you touch it from the menu button, now you have a choice to keep it auto. If it thinks it needs flash, it will, it will use it. If it doesn't think it, it won't. You can leave it on all the time or flash off, which is what I prefer, obviously. But the, you, you play with it, see what you think. Um, and so I just touch it to turn it to those possibilities and touch it to turn it off. The night mode, again, you can do auto. And you can play with that. Uh, live mode, you had the shortcut at the top. The next one is, these are more like stylistic ways that you might like to photograph. The standard is what I have stuck to, but if you swipe to the right, this is a more contrasty image, and it's hard to tell in here probably, but if you do, if you do it at home in uh, natural light, you can see very vibrant type of photo, more warm tones, more cool tones. You can, that you can see a little bit. There's, well, it's hard to tell on the screen in here, but in your phone you can see it. There's, it's, it's definitely yellow cast to a white wall or a bluer cast to a white wall. So those are, and that means when you take the picture, you'll always have, if you like a f certain style, a certain look, it'll always look that way. Of course, these can be changed in post or what we call editing. You can always change that. So we'll take this, those off. You can change your aspect ratio. You can do a square picture. It used to be that Instagram only wanted square pictures, but um, that I believe has changed. I'm not a big Insta. Um, you can do a 16 by nine. So you can do different aspect ratios, which we don't want. We want standard. Um, this is the, again, this is the exposure, making it lighter or darker, like we saw the icon at the top. And there's a timer. Now this is really cool, especially if you're able to put your phone um, on some kind of tripod or tripod-like device and you wanna be in the picture. You turn your timer on, you've got a three second or a 10 second, and then you have time to get into the picture. Or if you're just not that s steady and you just want to 
you, you, um, take the picture and then wait three seconds so everything st is staying still. These are similar to the styles we talked about before, but these are presets, and there's more of them. Dramatic, dramatic warm, and you scroll, and then black and white, so you can shoot in black and white. Again, you can change this in post, especially if it's a raw image, but um, they have some, well, we call them presets that you can play with, and then the raw. Um, let's see, let me just look at my notes. Do we have any questions? on anything I've covered so far. Okay. Um, the, one other thing is on the right here, this icon is where the, I'm not gonna do it, but if you touch it, it turns it into a, sel a selfies. Looks like I kept a preset on there that I'm not gonna want. There we go. So that's the basics of the camera itself and how to just navigate your way around. The last thing I do wanna show you, and I have it up here in, in, um, in a group of apps, there's a tips that Apple has on their phone. And in the tips, if you scroll down, there's photos and there's camera. And every time you have a software update, there's always tips on the new stuff that they've added in all parts of your phone, not just the camera, but specifically in here are camera tips that you can go and you can read. And of course you can go on YouTube and you can watch this video on YouTube <laughs> over and over until you, 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 until you feel comfortable. But any of this, get up and play with it, get up and practice with it. You just get better with time. And I think Fred is going to come up and actually talk about how to take photos, composing photos, getting sharper images, et cetera. So give me a second while we switch our phones. All right. All right. Hi, folks. My name is Fred, Fred Floro. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to take pictures and uh, what to look uh, when uh, taking scenes or pictures of groups and so on and so forth. But anyway, um, Johnny mentioned these lines, these white lines that you will see when you turn on your camera. These, these lines are optional. They can be set on and off in uh, uh, settings camera, but they relate to a rule called the rule of thirds, which every photographer knows the rule of thirds. Um, it uh, divides the screen in nine areas at the intersection. Each, each intersection is at a third, either at a third from the top or from the right. Anyway, so the idea is to put your subject somewhere in one of the corners or in between either the lower corners or the upper corners. A lot of people will say it's not a good idea to put the subject right in the center. That's up to you to decide. But that's the reason for all these lines. Um, the iPhone has a double cross and the double cross is used to um, keep the phone level. If you move the two crosses, eventually it will overlap, and that means that the phone is level. Also, Johnny mentioned the, the fact that um, uh, the iPhone at least can take pictures in row mode. Um, just to give you an idea, one picture in row mode uh, takes about eight times more storage. In your, uh, in your phone memory, so keep that in mind. If you don't plan to process it after the fact, then don't use it. Okay, um, another thing about the iPhone is that the iPhone is pretty much floating in, up in the air in your hand, and it's moving all the time when you take a picture. And although it has excellent software to prevent uh, camera shake, um, it is possible to get blurry pictures. So what do you do? Um, the good idea is not to keep the phone far away from you because then you shake the most. The best is, if you can, to hold it with two hands and 
close to your body because that's when you shake the least. Also, if you can lean against a wall or something, that's, that's the best. Um, the iPhone, as well as other phones, have two ways of taking pictures. One is to either buy a, uh, a big white soft button or an actual button on the side of the phone. I prefer to use the soft button right here because if you push the actual switch on the side, it takes more force and then the phone becomes a little bit unstable. So that's about taking pictures. Now let's take a look at and discuss about composition. And let's have a small presentation. So the difference between a good photographer and a bad photographer is that the good one takes more pictures. And if you don't believe me, ask any photographer. <laughs> um, we're approaching holiday season. And uh, when um, we, t we, we, we tend to take pictures of groups, people, children, pets, etc. Um, engage the groups or the people you interact with. In other words, look at them, talk to them, make them laugh, make them do crazy stuff because they're going to laugh afterwards when you, they look at the picture. Um, and most importantly, when you take groups of, uh, when you take a picture of uh, a large group of people, let's say you have a, a group of like nine people, um, most of the times you'll see that at least one person has their eyes closed and that drives you nuts. Oh, I should have taken another picture. There's a, there's a very scientific rule which says count the number of total people that you have in your group. Let's say you have nine, divide that by three and add one. That's the minimum number of pictures that you need to take to get at least one with um, all eyes open. So here's an example of a picture that came out the second time and at least one person has their, eye, their eyes closed. However, they were engaged by the photographer and they're all smiling and they're happy. Uh, here's another example of engagement, the kid and uh, his mom are looking at a photographer. And this guy is also looking at a photographer and smirking. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a very good example where the picture is good, but it's, there, there's no engagement, which means that, you know, the picture is not pleasant to look at. These people, uh, they, these ladies, they, they look at somebody else, they engage with somebody else. Just to say, hey, look at me now and the picture completely changes. Another question is, you know, especially if you don't have a lot of room, what do you left, off, left out of a person? And there are some rules, such as do not cut ears, do not cut elbows, or do not cut hands, fingers. Also, do not cut in the middle of the shin and don't cut just above the feet. However, it is acceptable to cut a little bit of the top of the hairline. For some reason, top, cutting a little bit of brain is okay, but not the ears. Um, also, the portraits can border the lower part of the neck. That's your passport uh, picture. Or um, part, of the, the, the part of the breast area and up, and that's your corporate picture. Um, it's also okay to cut just above the knees if you, don't, if you don't have enough room to take the picture. If you cannot step back, you know, it's okay to do that. And uh, this is a uh, representation or graphic representation I was just uh, saying before. If you have a phone and you want to take a picture of it, <laughs> it's good to have it. I have it in my, uh, in my preferred uh, album. Oh, good? Okay. Um, photography is full of rules. And um, let's start with some of them. <laughs> One is that less is more. What does that mean? It means that do not put too much stuff in your picture. Just focus on the things that uh, you want to present to an audience. 
a person, a pet, an item, whatever. Do not try to include too much. And think about the message that you want to tell the, the person that's looking at your picture. For instance, if you take a picture of a group of friends next to a holiday tree, next to a nice piece of furniture, next to a window from where you can actually see a beautiful landscape in, in the back, now your picture is very, very busy. So when you look at it, you don't know where to look. Your eyes runs all over the place. So don't do that. And by the way, rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> so don't, uh, don't follow exactly what I'm saying, but most of the times these rules work out very well. Here's an example. This picture, I, I saw this picture and I saw this statue and something was very interesting about this statue. However, in this picture, um, actually, let me ask you this question. Take like three seconds and try to memorize how your eyes look at this picture. And let me see, L let me see if I can guess. The first thing that you looked at was, let me see if I can zoom in, was this yellow uh, leaf at the bottom. The second thing was this white area at the bottom of the statue, mm -hmm. followed by the knees, and eventually the sky, which is totally in, uh, not interesting. Why? Because all these areas are the brightest areas in the picture. And then there is leaves, there is nature, but I cannot convey you what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is that this statue is actually very interesting and I saw something very interesting, but you, you can't see it. So just by moving a little bit and focusing on the subject, now you can see what I wanted to convey to you. I thought of the interaction between this woman and this child was quite interesting. And you also, you understand that it's out in the nature by looking at the leaves, you don't have to see the whole tree. It's a uh, uh, fall, which you, know, you see the leaves in the background. So just focus on the subject. And we have models. As I said, avoid bright spots at the edges of the cam or, or the edges of the pictures. Um, your eyes will be attracted like a magnet to the, uh, to the, uh, to these brightest spots in the picture. Um, another rule that I always break it because I don't know, my eyes are not level is was take pictures such that the horizon is, um, is level, especially when you go out to the, um, um to take pictures uh, on ocean, seas, um, ponds, the, the line, the water line has to be level. It never comes out level in my pictures. Uh, here's an example of a bright spot that captures your eye. This is actually not a mine or a cave man-made, it's a lava tube in Hawaii. However, I want to show the lava tube not the light, but your eyes go straight to the light because it's very bright. So in post-processing, you can actually crop it a little bit and now your eye, your eyes will go to the lava tube. So here's an example of a bright spot. Here's, a, here's a, an example of one of my pictures where the um, ocean is not level. It can be very easily corrected in, uh, in the phone and we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, here's another example of a bright spot, and the bright spot is the yellow spot in the middle, as well as the bright background outside. Although the picture is about me and my reflection in this lamp. And this is another picture of a nice car, but the bright spots in the picture makes it not to look at it. Um, another rule that it's actually difficult to follow is to keep the vertical edges vertical. Um, that is when you take pictures of uh, buildings. It's actually very difficult to get the buildings to be, the edge of the buildings to be uh, vertical. 
It is possible to correct the distortion um, by either moving around the scene or later on. However, if you try to correct later on, make sure that you get way more in the picture than uh, you actually want to take a, a, a snapshot of because when you correct, you're going to lose a lot of that in, in the correction, and we're going to see that later. Here's an example of um, edges that are not vertical. These are two monitors, and I never seen in my life a trapezoidal monitor, but that's how they look like in this picture. So then I moved around, and yeah, they look a little bit better, but if you look at the monitor on the left, it's still trapezoidal. By just moving a little bit more, now suddenly the monitors look actually okay. So move around if you can. That's not entirely possible when you take pictures of buildings, but with other objects, it is possible. Here's another example. Um, look at the door on the left. The door is completely crooked. But just by bending your knees a little bit, suddenly the door is straight. So keep that in mind. This is an example where it's just not possible to have the building and the uh, kid in the picture all level. It's just not possible. So what I did, I chose something in the picture that it's um, vertical, and that is the leg of the child in the picture. But the building, it is what it is. It adds to the, to the charm of the picture, if you will. Um, here's an example of a picture in Boston where everything is straight. Uh, in this case, it was quite easy to uh, keep everything straight. So bright spots might not be avoided, but um, you can move around to mask them behind other objects, uh, or you can use the bright sources to, uh, back, uh, to backlight your uh, subject. For instance, in this case, this is an example of a busy picture. I have a fireplace, a nice uh, surrounding, and a drink. But the message that I want to convey is the drink. So just by moving a little bit, you know, I now your eyes will look more at the drink rather than the fireplace and everything else. Um, if you go to a restaurant, you always have those small uh, candles on the table uh, to look at the menu, of course. But you know, you can always move them behind your drink and take a picture of your drink. It will make a more dramatic uh, picture. Here's another example. Uh, here's an example where um, I didn't have a candle, but I had a fireplace going, and uh, I, was, uh, I was trying to put a fire behind this drink, but it was too far away to backlit my drink. So I just moved a little bit and make the drink a little bit on fire, just to add a little bit of effect to the picture. Um, and here's another example of um, backlit um, drink. Uh, another thing that uh, it's a rule that actually uh, I try to follow, but um, it's hard to follow, is to declutter your picture. Uh, busy backgrounds um, sometimes cannot be avoided. So uh, use what is called a bokeh, uh, bokeh technique to focus just on your subject um, and try to blur the background. Um, with these uh, smartphones, you do not have a choice to select what is called the f-stop, which is the aperture. So um, you kind of have to do a lot of tricks to get your subject in focus and the background out of focus. Um, some of the tricks are go close to the subject, as close as you can, and just click on the subject in your picture, and the camera will blurry a little bit the background. Or use the portrait mode. That's uh, where the phone uses software to blur the, the background. Here's an example of a normal picture. I'm trying to take a picture of this uh, salt and pepper shaker, but I have a very busy background, although out of focus, but it's busy. Then I focus just on, the, um, on my subject. I still have a, a blurry background, a little bit busy, but it's, it's a little bit better. Then I step back quite a bit, like six feet or more, and then I use the tele lens in the phone to, and then zoomed in all the way. 
it's a bit better, but the background is still busy. And then I went to the portrait mode and look at the difference. The background is now completely blurred because now the phone uses the software to blur the background. So here's the comparison. And this is another example where you work with what you have. You know, the, the background is rather busy, but you can still uh, focus closely, cl very close to your subject and kind of ignore the background or the phone will ignore the background. Um, don't be shy to stage your pictures. In other words, spend some time to arrange your subjects to make it more interesting. Here are some examples. They look natural, but actually spend some time to arrange all those tomatoes and peppers. Uh, they look random, but they're not. I spent, again, I spent some time to arrange them to make them more interesting. Uh, this is, again, not a random picture. I took a little bit of time to arrange all these breads and flowers and so forth. If you go to a restaurant and, and people like to take pictures of, um, of their food at restaurants, at least my, my friends do, and I do sometimes, uh, just put it at an angle that it looks a bit more interesting. And uh, here's another picture that looks maybe not staged, you know, a burger that somebody took a, took a bite out of it. The bite was carefully staged to look like a bite. <laughs> and by the way, this is not meat. It's a vegetarian burger. And yet another stage picture, uh, breadstick, um, soft boiled egg. Uh, this was car <laughs> carefully staged because I wanted, if you look carefully around the olive, there is the reflection of the olive in the martini. Uh, bread makers, and I am an amateur bread maker, um, stage a lot their pictures. And this is an example of a uh, croissant in cross section that is staged behind. And behind, I have another bread to give it this, to give a background to the whole picture. Um, like this is a panettone with an example of serving coffee in this case, also staged. Uh, these breadsticks did not happened to be that way, it were, they were also staged. So in other words, staging is not a bad thing to do. Spend some time to uh, improve your pictures. Um, and I guess that's all I have about composition. Any questions? I guess not. Are there any, are there any apps for the Android? Yes, uh, pretty much um, all the major apps such as Adobe uh, Lightroom that we're going to talk about, Snapseed and miscellaneous others are available for all platforms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there some advantage to editing your picture on your phone rather than waiting to get home and doing it on a computer with a big screen and find 32 inches? Yes. What is it? I Could you just, uh, repeat the question for the folks at home, too? Go ahead. Sorry. So the question was um, if it's uh, better to edit it on the phone or download the picture uh, at home and edit it uh, at home. Um, the apps that are made for the phone, they are specifically made to deal with the pictures taken by the phone. Mm -hmm. And they're usually much uh, faster. So if you want to edit a picture and put it or send it to your friends or put it on social media, on the phone will probably take you less than 30 seconds if you know what you're doing. Um, to download it, edit it on a computer, upload it, it will take you more like 15 to 20 minutes. So it's much faster. And the apps on the phone, they do an absolute great job. I would just add to that to say that an advantage to editing on the phone for me is posting on social media or texting or, or emailing it to friends and family. It's all done almost you know, instantaneously. So that's a big advantage. The only time that I take any of my iPhone 
photos and bring them into Lightroom or Photoshop on my computer is when I want to do it with a composite. I want to do something creative. I, gotta I have to combine two or three images. And while there are apps for that on the phone that you can use, I prefer Photoshop because I've got a, a Wacom tablet. I've got a lot more control over. Um, and Photoshop, it, to me, is the be-all, end-all for good composites. Um, although, like I said, there are some apps on the phone. We're not going to get too much into those. We're going to do some real basic. We have about 20, 25 minutes. I, I want to say uh, apparently there was a, um, a glitch the first five minutes of the program. So if, I, I apologize to the people in the audience. I'm going to go really quickly through some of the stuff I already did because the the uh, recording is not going to capture the first five minutes. One of the cameras wasn't working properly, Lara's told me. So I'll, I'll do this. Where's the cursor? Here we go. I keep my, this is the phone app, the camera app, the native camera app, and I keep it on my home screen all the time. Um, there are menu choices at the top and at the bottom. The various ways you can take a photo, types of photos are listed on the bottom. Mostly you're going to be in portrait or photo mode. Portrait will just give you, as Fred was saying, a little bit more blurred background so your subject is in focus and the background falls off, giving your subject um, uh, the, the, the star of the show, as you will. Um, you can do videos, you can do slow motion videos, you can do time lapse videos. Um, there is a tip section, I think that probably got in the, go to your tips and learn about those things. You can turn the flash, on. this is the flash, you can turn the flash on or off all the time or keep it on auto. You can do night mode when photos are darker. Raw is a large size file image that gives you much more information about your image for editing purposes. If you don't need that, I would suggest turning it off because it does take up a large file size. And I don't know why the timer's on. Let me switch the timer off. Um, and then live photos. This is where we're going to see a little bit in the editing of live photos. If you take a live photo, it takes a one second video clip of your image. And as we get into editing, um, you'll see what that, what does, uh, what we can do with that. So we have a photo. We're going to start with editing in the native app only. So let me go into my photos, all photos, and I've sort of picked a picture that needed a little editing, but was still a cutie patootie, because it's our grandson. So this was taken in portrait mode, and you can see that because the, the child's face is fairly in focus, but the background, while he's, while he's sort of close to the background, it's still as far enough away to give you a good blur. One of the secrets to having that fall off of sharpness to get the subject sharp and the background not as distracting, the further the subject is away from the background, the more distance you can create from the subject to the background, the more blur you're going to have, the less distracting it's going to be. Um, so let me get out of this. So, um, and you can't see my screen. You can't see my editing parts of the screen. Fred, can you see if that you can help me with that? Uh, no. Uh, if I look on my screen on my camera right here, all my editing stuff is here, but it doesn't show up on the screen up there. No, it's not moving at all. It's okay. Where are you, Loki Bear? Right here. Oh, it did it for a second. And then it went away. See, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, I didn't realize that was going to happen on the screen. And I don't know how else to show you. Me tap the, tap the yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. It goes away on my phone and it comes back on my phone, but it doesn't come back on the screen. Um, when you're in, when you look at your pictures and you're reviewing your pictures, there is an edit button at the top of the screen. I'm going to click it. And uh, there we go. Hello. That's your editing screen. Um, this was taken in portrait mode. So the default is going to come up with these little um, icons down here that you can actually change the type of lighting uh, for different 
effects. Studio light, contour light, play with that, stage light. This is, the next one is really freaky too. Some of these are kind of freaky. It's almost like a negative, but um, I tend to stick with the natural light. On the bottom, um, this icon that looks like a little dial or timer is actually your main editor. And most of the time, if you click on the very first magic wand, that's the auto. The auto will usually do a good job. That is not a good job. That screen is really not a good job. It's better on my phone, just by the way. Um, there, and if you take your finger and press left and scroll through, there's all sorts of options you have in here. You can change how vibrant it is. You can change the saturation. You can change if the highlights are really high, which is the brightest parts of the picture. You can just bring the brights down, not the whole exposure. If you want the whole exposure down, there's exposure. If you want to add a little vignette, the, again, play with these. This is not a full course on iPhone photography, but you have a lot of options in here to change the picture. But 90% of the time, while well, that screen does not show it, Auto will do a fantastic job. And if you don't like it, you can cancel it and discard the changes. And even if you edit it and say, they say you put it in um, and click done and go back to that picture, you can always click on edit and revert. So it always goes back. You always have the original picture by clicking revert and revert to the original. So you have options there. Another icon in here that you probably will want to do is some cropping. That's a universal icon for cropping. And if I would, and if you can't see it, but I noticed it right away. Fred was talking about the edges of your picture. Uh, that's Papa feeding him, and his finger is right there, and that bugs, <laughs> bugs me. So I would, I, by taking my finger into any of these corners or sides, you can move the edge of the picture. So I'm going to crop that right out, and just, I'm going to, now you see that, I, I don't know if you can see on here, but I have the, um, when I touch the crop, you can see the grid that Fred was talking about, and see how the baby's eye is right in that right corner? I have to, this is hard, I have to hold this. There we go. See how the baby, there, the, the, the subject's right in that third, right in one of those um, areas that Fred was talking about, and that's pleasing to most people who look at the picture. You want, you don't want the baby's head in the, unless it's like a flower, and the flower takes up the whole picture. There are certain times you do break the rules, but by and large, you want the subject a little off center. So I, in cropping, I can, if, if I didn't take it originally as perfectly as I wanted it, by cropping, I can change that. Let's see, and this is these presets we were talking about. If there was some kind of stylistic preset I wanted to add to this, which for a child I don't think you will, maybe black and white. You can change it in post, and even if I save this and I decide later I don't want that anymore, I can go back to edit and I can revert back to the original. Of course, now I have to recrop it, but that's, you know, you still have to do that. So that's the basic of the native app. Now, we were talking about, let's say I edit this picture real quick. I'm just going to take that crop off. And I go and I say done. At the bottom, oh, you can't see it. There is a share button. It's a universal square with an arrow up. And that's how I would take it and it doesn't show you even on there, and text it or email it or put it to Lightroom or send it on Facebook. There's a whole bunch of options on the bottom of your screen of how you can share that image directly from your phone. Okay, so that's the native app. Any questions on the native app editing? It's, it's pretty basic, but it's pretty strong, and it really is just about going in there and playing with that. Um, now, Snapseed, I'm glad we have time for this. Snapseed is a really, really powerful app. It is free, which is amazing. I would say uh, people would pay 9 or $10 or even a subscription base for this. Don't tell Snapseed that. Um, and if you've downloaded it, when you first open, this is what you're going to see, a plus sign. And when you tap on the plus sign, it'll ask you to select photos. You can... Um, select, I've got some photos I've already worked with in here, but select more photos from your camera. 
um, and, or you can open, um, I think you can open from files. You can take a picture with your camera. These are all gonna open from, from your photos or you can actually take a picture through Snapseed. So I'm gonna select more photos and uh, let's go back to Logie Bear. Mm -mm -mm. No, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. This is just gonna be random. So I picked another picture and it should be, it should show up here. Where are you? Mm, I don't know where it is. Here's another picture of him. So I chose a picture and you have, again, these presets of looks, they're, they're pre-cooked in that you can do a whole bunch of different things. Portrait, smooth, pop, again, play with all these. But the biggest power thing of this is the tools. If you go into tools, you have now a whole menu of different things you can do. The tuning an image is more about exposure. Details is sharpening it. Um, but a big thing people like to do with this is the healing brush. If there's something, um, let's say, I don't like this light stand coming out of the back of his head. I'm going to take a healing brush and just with my finger on a swipe, well, that didn't work. You might have to play with it a little bit. That didn't work. Nope, never mind. That was a poor choice. But sometimes you'll actually get a whole person out of there. Play with it. it, it the healing brush is actually very powerful. If you have a stylus for your phone, that is usually... Um, uh, 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 the stylus is more precise than your finger. Um, there is lens blur in here if you want to make a blurry background. The, uh, again, there's tutorials on Snapseed on the app um, to learn to do different things. I don't really have the time to go into all these. I just want to show you there's a lot of possibilities. If you just want to do something to part of the scene, make part of the scene darker or lighter, choose the selective and I, I, again, I don't have the time to go through all this. It's powerful because you, you can choose parts that you want to be light and parts that you want to be dark. I want to save enough room for Fred to go over Photoshop Express and then save time for questions and answers. Right, Fred? <laughs> I had actually told Laura we could have done four weeks like four one-hour sessions and, and, and still had plenty to talk about because uh, you can see these are the other apps that I have. <laughs> To uh, for editing, put your, do you need your phone on? Yep. And then I'll just be here for questions and answers. We're doing good. All right. We'll wait for the phone to sync with the screen, and there we go. So we're gonna continue talking about um, editing your pictures. And um, Johnny mentioned the, um, all, the, all the tools that are available on your phone uh, at the bottom of the screen. I, I use them, um, especially for small things like cropping and uh, adjusting a little bit of distortion. But um, all the other tools, I don't use them. I prefer a different app, which is called um, Photoshop Express. And Photoshop is a very uh, difficult tool to use on a computer. On, an, on a smartphone, is a completely different app. It's rather easy to use. And there is another reason why I like uh, photo, uh, actually there are uh, two more reasons why I like Photoshop Express is because um, it does the same thing as the phone will do in terms of adjusting your um, light and correction, but it does it much better. I edited pictures both ways. And Adobe has a lot more years experience uh, when it comes to adjusting uh, and processing pictures. And the result is much, much better. The second thing is because I'm lazy. And rather than going and opening an app like Snapseed and selecting a picture, here at the top of the screen, you see three dots at the upper right uh, corner. And if I click on the three dots, 
it's going to give me uh, an option to pick another app to edit. And guess what? Photoshop Express is one of them. The other one that you see on the screen, it's Retouch, which will do what uh, Johnny was talking about uh, earlier to take stuff out of your picture that you don't like. But we're not going to talk about that app. We're going to talk about Photoshop Express. So Photoshop Express, if I click on it, it'll automatically load the picture that I was looking. Uh, I, I don't have to go look for it. And then the, what to do next. Um, at the bottom of the screen are the tools available. And each photographer has its own flow. Flow means what to do first to a picture, second, third, and so on and so forth. Most of these decisions depend on how the picture looks like. In this case, um, I would like to straighten up the, the columns a little bit. So um, we can go into uh, the crop menu, which is uh, the, right in the middle at the bottom. And um, we can choose from aspect ratio, rotate, and transform. And I'm going to go to transfer because I want to alter my picture. Now, conveniently enough, um, I can do a uh, vertical uh, skew, which will be manual. Or I can uh, be lazy and say, uh, just uh, do it for me on uh, auto, and boom. It will automatically um, adjust the picture. As you can see, there are some edges at the top left and right which will be lost uh, due to the adjustment. However, the columns are straight, and they parallel with the vertical lines in the picture. And also, um, you have, you know, the, the picture had enough, uh, enough uh, room to get rid of the parts that uh, have been uh, adjusted. So we're going to say, um, OK. Uh, and we're going to go to another uh, step, which is to make the picture look better. Um, there is there is another lazy way to go about this. If you look in the upper right corner, there is a wand there with some stars, and if you click on it, it will figure out by itself uh, how it wants to improve the picture. Uh, I don't always do that. I don't necessarily like it. So um, my next step in my flow is to go to adjustments, which is highlighted in blue at the bottom. Adjustments, um, in adjustments you can adjust your exposure, you can adjust um, a bunch of things. So the first thing that is highlighted is exposure, which means light, you know, how much light you want to uh, put in the picture. Um, I don't usually use that first um, because um, Photoshop Express has another tool called Shadows which is the first, fourth one. And sometimes you don't want the entire picture being, um, uh, being brightened, just the parts that are in the shadow. So if I'm going to adjust just the shadows, look at the ceiling. This is how it was. And if I adjust the shadows slider, just the ceiling, but nothing else will come into more, uh, to be more, um, uh, bright. Now, at the um, cent uh, center right of the picture, there is a white building in the outside, which it's kind of bright. And we can adjust the brightness of, or at least try to adjust the brightness of very um, bright um, uh, objects in uh, highlights, which is to the left of shadows. And the highlights, um, in highlights, you actually go the other way, which is to the left, down. So if we go down, as you can see, suddenly we can see more through the windows. I'm, I'm going to go the opposite, like the, the opposite of highlight, which becomes kind of, kind of blurry. But if you go toward the left, suddenly you can see more through the windows, and it's not so, so bad. So here it was before. Here it is with highlights. 
Then, at, then at, at this point, I'm looking at the picture and I'm saying, do I need more light? Do I need more brightness? Uh, normally, you should not adjust brightness, but if you post the picture on social media, most of the pictures are very bright. So a little bit of brightness will not hurt in this case. Just a tad. So at this point, the picture is actually okay. We might want to crop a little bit more, but uh, maybe crop um, Actually, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna crop uh, this picture. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna. Oops, I lost all my edits. That that's one thing that um, um, Photoshop Express has has this done button, which is very confusing. And um, and what it means it means that uh, you go back to where you came from, but you lost all your uh, settings. So I'm just gonna quickly go through all my editing again. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so the next thing that uh, I want to do is maybe look at some effects. Um, and I'm gonna go directly to what is the effects um, section, which is clarity and dehaze. Clarity brings a little bit of sharpness and to your picture in more detail. Oops. For instance, if I slide to the right, I can see more detail in the picture. Sometimes when it's too much, it doesn't look natural, so don't overdo it. A little bit might help. Uh, saturation, sometimes it helps, but when you take a picture with a smartphone, there's already some processing done, and one of it is called saturation. In other words, to improve the color. So s most of the times you don't need to add more saturation to smartphone pictures, but yeah, just a little bit doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt. Uh, dehaze is mostly for outdoor uh, scenes. So that's about it. Um, th that, that's my picture. That's my picture editing for this one. Um, so I'm going to go to another example. This is a pretty clear example of picture in New York. And uh, it's all crooked. So um, I'm going to use the phone setting, actually, because it's much faster than going to another app. So that's it. It's, it's all it's all fixed. It's now it's looking better. So if I want to edit a little bit more, I can go into my preferred uh, app, Photoshop Express, and uh, I don't need to adjust or crop. Um, I don't think I need that, but I would like to um, to um, add a little bit of. Um, highlights look at the sky in the background the sky is pretty washed up but if i slide down the highlights i get a little bit of definition in the background so i get a little bit the highlights usually darken the picture a little bit more so you can compensate that with just a tad of bit or brightness or shadows actually the shadows will bring the buildings into more uh will, will, will light the building a little bit more uh, so that's this one Let's take a look. Another example is if you take pictures of interiors, such as this one. Uh, th this picture has two problems. One is that um, the walls are not vertical, or the edges of the wall, and the back of the picture is in the dark. So we can go into, uh, edit it into Photoshop Express and go quickly to um, Transform Auto. Now the walls are straight. Okay, then we go to adjustments. And what I wanna do now is to bring this dining area and kitchen uh, more into the lights. So uh, I'm gonna go to, not to exposure, because if I uh, um, adjust the exposure, then the, this part, which is already um, uh, bright, is gonna get even more brighter. So as you can see, it doesn't help. So I'm gonna go to shadows. 
So look at the dining area. So if I slide, suddenly the dining area is now more lit. And we can uh, adjust a little bit the highlights by slide down, uh, give a little bit of definition. Um, and I guess this picture is ready to go. Uh, let's see what else uh, we have here. We have, uh, here's, another, uh, here's another picture where we can adjust um, the, the crooked uh, edges of doors and walls that we already talked about. Here's, here's an example of um, a picture where this is a uh, waterfall in um, Hawaii, but the middle of the waterfall is quite bright. It, doesn't quite show on the screen that's quite bright, but it is very bright. It is really, really white. So I want to take um, uh, some of these. Uh, I, I want to take this picture and uh, and bring it into uh, Photoshop and cut some of that brightness. So I'm going to go straight to um, highlights and look in this area of the waterfall. This is area of interest. So I'm gonna dial down the highlights and suddenly we can see more of the waterfall. So here's how we came and here's how it is now. So we get a bit more definition in the uh, waterfall. None of the other section, uh, none of the other parts of the picture have been uh, altered. Uh, the phone did a good job of um, increasing the saturation of the green. If you like more green, you can go to uh, saturation and try to crank it up a little bit more. It looks a bit unnatural, so don't do it. There's also vibrance. Uh, what is the difference between vibrance and saturation? Vibrance is more subtle, it, it's not as strong as saturation. So I'm gonna try vibrance a little bit. It get, gives a little bit more, a more pop to the picture without being too objectionable. So maybe a little bit of vibrance, maybe. Uh, and uh, go back to light, um, maybe shadows to get some of this section here into put more light on it and we don't need too much and that's about it you know that that's all we need out of this so now my waterfall looks uh better um here's an example of a crooked uh, a line um, in the distance uh, this is very easily corrected with uh with the phone itself it, it gives you more lines as you can see more horizontal lines um, here's another example of a crooked horizon. And this is um, an example of how do you want to present your subject. In, in this case, this is a baguette and a cross-cutting baguette and it's vertical. Does it look better this way or does it look better if we flip it to the left? I think it's better if we flip it to the left. So in other words, the baguette is horizontal. So that, that can be done very easily in the phone by just uh, going to the, uh, again, edit and, uh, oops, oh yeah, uh, edit, and then click on the crop section here at the bottom right. And the crop section has actually not just crop, but multiple adjustments. And one of them, it's up to the upper left corner, uh, gives you the opportunity to flip the picture. Um, obviously, there's too much information, so I'm gonna crop some of it. Maybe uh, give it a little bit more uh, space. Um, it's going to crop to the left, or we'll just leave. In, in some cases, you, you don't want to leave some uh, corners hanging there or uh, names of our manufacturers in case you don't want to 
you know, you don't want to put out on the social media um, uh, brands that you don't necessarily want to promote. All right, so this is uh, my bread, and then I can go again quickly in Photoshop Express um, and brighten. This time I'm going to start with brighten a little bit more. But being bread, you know, bread has a, a lot of crumb and a lot of texture, so uh, I'm going to go straight into the effects, into uh, clarity, and uh, adjust clarity. So suddenly my crumb looks more appealing. So before and after. And then you can make even uh, more interesting by uh, clicking on the lower left um, looks. Um, I don't actually use these. Um, uh, I prefer to just, um, you know, have the picture as is, but sometimes, you know, you can add some edges, some, some interesting edges to it or make it more interesting. Um, or um, let's see if you go to how, how did you get to borders? How did I get to borders? So again, uh, the lower on the lower part of the adjustments, there is this button. Um, yeah, the lower it says borders next to crop. And then click on it. And then it gives you a few options, like basic, edges, frames. Was it under the looks? Saw you on the looks or under crop? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, looks. looks is, is um, uh, in, in looks you, you have uh, pre presets, uh, and in presets uh, you, can, you can change the, the way your picture looks like. Uh, this is what Johnny presented uh, before. But I just want to highlight that one of the only thing that I use in this looks is actually uh, the portrait uh, because you can add a little bit of vignette and make it a little bit more interesting, you know, if you, if you choose to do so. Um, or you can just put some borders uh, by clicking on borders and uh, you have obviously your basic borders with a little bit of vignette, which Vignette helps to focus the eye in the middle of the picture. If you have like a flower or something that you want the viewer to look in the middle of the picture, a vignette will definitely help. Um, or, or you can use miscellaneous uh, edges to your picture and be creative. So that's about it. It's better when it's all big like that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So that's, a, that, that's all I have about uh, processing. Did we talk about how to focus when you take a picture? Like pressing and holding? No. Yeah, I'll, we'll do that real quick. Sure. Okay. Your phone's already hooked up. Oh. oh, you wanted to? Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Your phone was already hooked up. Yeah, so. all right. So um, the question was how to focus um, and how to, oh, how to better focus on a uh, object. So. I'm going to take this remote and put it here. Um, and if I take a picture of this remote in normal mode, I can see the people in the background and I can see the remote. If I want to play with the remote uh, just to give, give it uh, more focus or more brightness, I can click on it. I, I'm, I'm pressing my finger on the remote and a square shows up. And then I have a slider and I can make it brighter or darker. The, the slider, it has um, a little bit of uh, icon, uh, a light icon to it. Um, and this isn't working. I was trying to, I was trying to do the pointer, the pointer's not working. Um, okay. it's, it's a, okay. Or to, like, like I said earlier, to blur the background um, you can use the portrait mode, which is definitely not appropriate for this picture, but it gives you the idea that now, as you can see, the background is definitely uh, blurred. The, the phone is looking for a face, so definitely this is not a face. So. 
That is too far. I think it's too, too far. Yeah, no, it's, it's too far. Um, yeah. Well, and then pressing and holding will keep the focus locked, too. Like if you... Let yep. Now it's uh, a, 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 a yellow area showed up at the top, a, a, a F lock. So it's, fo it's, it's locked. It's locked on that object. And I think if I move the picture, if, if I move the phone and the camera, the phone is looking for my object and it will stay focused. It will not change. So that's useful, especially if you have a pet or a child that's running around and stays put for a few seconds, you can lock the focus on him, uh, on her. And then if it moves, then uh, the phone will be smart enough to uh, look for the object or for the person to, uh, uh, to put a focus on. Yeah, we didn't go over that. And that's where live view comes in. Live view is really great for kids, and I didn't well, go into the editing I, of live view. I, I think we had one hour, so. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we might come back in the spring and do a series. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Any final so, questions? Yeah, any yes, questions? Mark. Yes. Could you go back there to the very first picture you had? Go back to the very first picture, yeah. like this one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So the whites are too bright. Lights, L -I -G -H -T -S. Lights was the, it's like the talk of a mass light. Sure, yeah. Is there some way in which you could... Are you referring to the lights in the... Um... Yeah, the, the, the yellow lights. Yeah. Uh, not... Uh, well, actually there is, but not in Photoshop Express. In Adobe Lightroom, believe it or not, you can, you can select the, just those areas and um, adjust just those areas to your liking. You, you can do it in Snapseed. Or, or Snapseed, yep. yeah. Snapseed will do that, and it's easier with a stylus if you have small areas like that, because your finger can't be as precise as a stylus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Um, I have Photoshop Express that I loaded, mm -hmm. and I was trying to follow you but some of my icons were a little different. So the question is, uh, um, somebody in the audience has the same app, Photoshop Express, but the icons look different. Um, let's see. Um, do you have the same operating system, which is 15 point something point something? Mm -hmm. Do I have one? I have the, 13. The, You're talking about the phone? No, I'm talking about the OS, the phone OS or the, uh, or the app. So sometimes if you don't upgrade the app, uh, it will look different. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, I so sure. I, yeah, I noticed that some of the features that uh, Johnny, Johnny has an iPhone 14, I have 13. Uh, some of the features that she has available, I don't have. Right. So there, there, there could be some slight differences depending on the phone. Okay. But uh, the adjustments, they should be there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, there's also software upgrades to your phone and software upgrades to the app. Oh, so there's, right. there's two different there's software updates to the phone and software updates to the app. So those will, are variables, as well as the hardware difference. So like he has, he didn't upgrade to iOS 16 on the iPhone and I did. So that's one difference between us, but the Photoshop Express also, you may have a different op, uh, version of it than he does. Okay. Anything else? I know we've gone well over our hour here, but thank you all for coming out. Thank you, Fred. Good thank job. You, I, I learned some stuff from you. I learned from you, <laughs> definitely. And um, thank you for the, the, the people on, on YouTube for chiming in, too, for tuning in. Appreciate it. And I think we're out. Okay, thank you all so much. Just gonna give a quick goodbye to all you here in the audience and at home. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope you feel like you can take some really fabulous photos for over the holiday season. Um, please feel free if you are here in the room, we would love to hear from you on our evaluation form in the back. And you can just put it face down when you're all done. And please help yourself to some coffee, tea, and cookies on your way out. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. So much. Thank you.
question what the 